Hey guys, welcome to the shop today. This is Kaz with Joe Engineering Performance. So on the stand, we have a 2020, I have to think about that now, a 2020 uh, 6.7 Cummins engine. Uh, this engine was sent in to us from, from a uh, customer that asked us to build the engine. Now, when you send your engines in to us or you buy an engine from us, one of the things that we really, really like to do here uh, is kind of try to find out what went wrong, diagnose it, um, a lot of times it's really difficult because the customer might get the engine and does not get the core sent back to us for maybe even a month sometimes. So we really, in order to give you the best service that we possibly can, we want to look at your old engine if possible. A lot of times it's not possible, I understand that. But if we can look and find out what the cause of failure was, what killed this thing? Because as we always say, every part has a story and it's trying to tell you why it died and what happened. So if we were able to do like we did with this guy, we can talk about the crime scene for a minute, okay? So it's 2020, this engine's not very old. Now, some of the things that we see about this, it's funny because I can look at this thing and I can walk into it and I can already tell you a little bit about the customer. This guy already had this engine studded. Now, it's three years old. That tells me a couple of things. If he's already had it studded, he's got a tuner on this truck, 100%. That's the reason why. Possibly, uh, he's got a tuner on this truck. He had it studded because he already blew a head gasket, okay? I would venture and guess that he probably already blew the head gasket, um, and that's the reason why he went ahead and put studs on it. Now, the reason why we know some of these things that we're fixing to talk about is the evidence left behind. Now, the cause of failure, when we look in the intake, matter of fact, come over to the uh, intake on this engine here. And let me show you guys something. So immediately I knew it was going to be something along the lines of crack this. And the reason why is the amount of oil that we see. I mean, look at our hands now. Now, I can tell you which cylinder it was, at least for the most part, of which one had a problem, possibly, and which one did not have a problem. If you look at the exhaust over here, let me shine the camera in here. You can see this is dry, this is dry. That's wet as it can be all the way back. Now, how does that happen? Well, when the intake valve opens up, if there's anything in the cylinder, it's gonna push back through the intake and the other cylinders, because of where the oxygen actually is coming in, remember your air intake horns over here, it's forcing all that oxygen directly back to the cylinder. So if it comes back through the intake, the reason why these three cylinders got oil in them and the front three cylinders did not is because my pressure was here. So it went from high pressure to low pressure. So I was pushing all my oil back towards the rear of the engine. That's the reason why we see, if I had to look at this and guess and say, okay, where do you think that the problem precipitated from? Which one was the issue? I would say one, two, three, I'm gonna guess and say cylinder four, okay? Now, that's the reason why I can kind of take that guess and say if I had to look at this. So let's look and see if I'm right. So we go back and see, I'm actually wrong on this. Okay, it's not cylinder four, it's cylinder five. Okay, and some of that because it pulls in that area and some of that's because of a pressure drop. So we've got cylinder five here, but one thing that we notice about cylinder five is it's clean, all right? And the obvious is it's got a crack in the, in the piston. Now, that leaves a couple of things kind of making us wonder a few things. Now, Adam, who's the cameraman, and he gets a puzzled look on his uh, on his face. So if you have a question, feel free to share. I'm waiting for you to say coolant got in there or excess fuel to clean that cylinder. So what causes that is because now we have no compression in the cylinder. We completely lost it because we've got a gaping hole in here. However, the injector does not know that. The injector is still going to do its job, and that is to inject fuel. What's happening is, is now diesel fuel, when I was a kid growing up, we had a bunch of go-karts yeah, and three-wheelers and everything like that. And what we used is, we didn't have brake cleaner, that's too expensive. What we use is diesel fuel. <laughs> when you put all your parts in diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is great for cleaning oil. And now we're spraying it on the cylinder and also all the other uh, carbon and everything. So it's just washing that cylinder where there's nothing left in it. And this is the remnant of what we're seeing. At 30,000 PSI. Yeah. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But you notice there's a crack, and you notice the direction of the crack. So, the direction of the crack is along that is parallel to the wrist pin. The connecting rod is bolted in the crankshaft this direction. Crankshaft, connecting rod, wrist pin. Okay. Why would it crack along the wrist pin? Well, there's a reason. 
if that piston is brought to top dead center, I can actually take it and walk that piston back and forth in this direction. Because, let me show you the piston shaft. Okay, here's a Cummins piston. In its bore, it's got 3 thousandths clearance or whatever, right? It can rock this direction. It cannot rock this direction. It can't move away from the pressure. It cannot move away from the pressure. This is the location of the crack. Because I cannot rock and move away from the pressure, I am actually at the forefront of the greatest amount of cylinder pressure in the entire engine. And that's the reason why I'm gonna crack right along this area too. Um, so I have no way to get away from uh, the forces that are acting on it. Now what killed the engine? Well, the thing that killed this, the thing that killed this engine was actually injection timing. There's a couple of things that I can tell you and the reason why. One, I would uh, guess and say that the guy, like I said, had a blown head gasket. Now, if you were building a house, or you have a house that you're trying to rewire, what you notice is, is like the guy on a Christmas story where, you know, the lights on the, the socket, they're, they're melted and they're getting burnt and everything. Most people, and mechanics, a lot daisy of times. chain. Yeah, so what they say is, oh, there's a problem with the wire, right? Or there's a problem, they immediately look at the effect, not the cause, and they, they diagnose it as just that. The problem with it is, is you're totally wrong. What we're seeing is, is that the tire blew out, right? But the reason why the tire, so, well, Michelin makes a crummy tire. Well, you didn't realize that you just ran over a, a, an Abram tank sitting in the road. You think that might have any difference? It probably will affect it, right? So, so we're looking at this and we're going, okay, it's cracking. So what's happening? Well, everything has a fuse. So if we go, you know what? This breaker just keeps tripping. What we need is a bigger breaker, but we don't change the wire size, right? So we go to Lowe's and it used to be a 15 amp breaker, but now we're gonna put a 100 amp breaker in it because we're tired. Mama's tired of having to flip that breaker and she gets mad, we're gonna fix you up, right? So we go get a 100 amp breaker and we slap it in. And then this time, guess what? It doesn't trip. What it does, it burns your house down, right? Well, why? Because the wire size in the wall could not maintain the amount of amperage load that you were putting on it so it melts down. The guy blew a head gasket the first time. What was that? You think it's called a head gasket, but it's not. The actual proper term for that is not head gasket, it's called fuse. And the fuse blew. Instead of getting this resolved, now it could have been because, and it was, because of injection timing, because of tuners that are out there. Here's the, here's my little rant for the day. If you do not have a way to quantify, you cannot verify. Okay, I'll say it again. If you don't have a way to quantify your changes in the things that you're doing, you cannot verify anything that you're doing. If you have no way of testing what the cylinder pressure is, and most tuners out there, they have a dyno, if most of them don't have a dyno, but those that do have a chassis dyno, but they don't have a way of instrument, instrumenting the engine to make sure what the changes that are actually happening, they don't have an engine dyno, and they don't, have, they don't actually know what's going on in the cylinder. All they know is a skinny pedal, go fast, good. Go slower, bad. So that's it. That's the way that they are quantifying whatever tune that they're putting on this thing. But what happened is, is when we blew the head gasket the first time, this thing was not happy. It said, I am going to die if you do not do something. And what it did is, is because it probably had head bolts on it the first go round, we put ARP studs in this thing. Now, somebody goes, well, ARP is a stud problem. No, it's not. What it did was it fixed the fuse. But now we just move from one problem to the next. Now we can't lift the head anymore because we have a 220,000 pound tensile strength rod that will not allow it to go anywhere. So what's gonna happen? My forces, instead of going upward, they're gonna go downward. Now what's down below? Well, that's where my crankshaft lives, that's where my connecting rod lives, and that's where my piston lives. So now, because they're, according to the combined gas law, if you know anything about Freon, uh, for you technicians out there, this will ring true for you. For any given temperature that we equate to that Freon, we also can equate a given pressure. So there's a pressure temperature chart that they give you because there is a direct correlation. Sorry, I'm sweating like a Baptist plate. Give me just Or snow cone and feed, as, uh, as Mr. Outfire says. Anyways, so we have a PT chart, basically no different than what we're seeing with the fuel that's going in the cylinder and the injection timing. Sorry, don't mind me, the guys in the back. So, no different than that. What happens is, is that now, because we have increased the amount of injection timing, now when the piston comes up, it is squeezing that time, that, that, that oxygen, 
at a much smaller area, we have increased our pressure. And when we inject the fuel into that cylinder, we have a higher pressure that we're injecting the fuel. It makes more power. Why does it make more power? Because it's got more pressure. Why does it make more pressure? Because it's got more heat. Why does it make more heat? Because the oxygen molecules are actually rubbing together in a smaller area. And the issue with it is, is this. This engine is designed to work at a certain pressure, a certain temperature. What we've done is we've exceeded that. We knew that we exceeded that because we got head studs on it now and we blew head gaskets. Now what we did is we used all that force now into the piston. Now, if you look at the piston really close, let's zoom in again, you can see, and I wish I had, I'm gonna use a, a head stud. You can see the mark for the injector right here, 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 here. Oh, wait a minute. There should have been one right there, but there's not. So it's hitting the combustion bolt directly right here. So what would have caused it to crack on the back side? Well, there's a couple of theories that I would have on this, but a lot of times it can be inconsistency, um, basically more fuel flow than that nozzle. Keep in mind, those nozzles are generally EDM, so that's electro discharge machinery. So there is small variances. One side may not have been flowing as much as the other. There also could be that the, the rod be canted a little bit more. Now, if the piston has a little bit more protrusion on one side than the other side, what will happen is I'm gonna have a little bit more pressure on this side than the other. Now, what would cause that? Mainline center bore, we talked about this earlier, but the mainline center bore could be canted a little bit. The bearing could be canted. The rod journal housing could be a little bit off. The rod could most likely be tweaked a little bit. Or the wrist pin, there's a lot of stack up clearances that could cause a little bit of variation there. But that's really not, that's kind of a moot point at this, at this stage of the game. This all could have been avoided. Instead of replacing it with a 100 amp breaker, what we should have figured out was what's overloading the circuit. 